15 and one on the season. And he is gonna be facing off with the Wisconsin native and senior, Jens Lantz, 11 and 12 thus far. DeSanto's style is pretty similar to the what it seems like. Very high pace, comes at you right away, gets right to his ties, goes to his attack. Lanza, as mentioned, a redshirt senior out of Ellsworth, four-time state champion for Ellsworth High School as the WIAA High School individual state title comes soon. DeSanto clamping hard on that left arm of Lance's. That seems to be the trend for Iowa very early on here. Aggression right off the bat. Iowa notorious for their strong push and pull, high pace, like to push you along the edge of the mat. Santo competed at Drexel last season, finishing 29 and seven, qualified for his first NCAA championships. Now finds himself in the singlet, same singlet as Spencer Lee. Individual that he had a lot of trouble with in high school. As you see the two point takedown for DeSanto. Yeah, if you saw there, um, DeSanto had a very strong grip on that left arm of uh, Jens Lantz. Right when he had a good control of it, he went right to his shot to that fireman's. Went straight to the dump, now he's on top, putting some heavy pressure on top with that shoulder digging right in the middle of Lance's back. Santos' lone loss this year came against number 14, Austin Gomez of Iowa State. Much earlier in the season, Santo dropped that decision 14 to nine, but since has won 11 straight. DeSanto with some great top pressure, making it very hard for Lance to build his base right now. Lance has got to get his knees underneath him and try to build that base and then work from there. Lance has also won two matches straight for himself after losing six straight. Most recently defeated Dylan Duncan of Illinois last week, five to four. Lance hustling back to the center. See, right there. Had strong control of that left arm. Goes straight for the fireman's. Santo looking like he was electing to let Lance up early. It was a quick caution. Seems to be that DeSanto's gonna let up Lance. One more escape, Badger! Lance now on the board, two to one. Just over a minute left in this first period. Iowa up six to zero after that early Spencer Lee pin of Ethan Rotundo. Here in the second match, this final conference duel for both squads. If you pay attention to DeSanto here, look at his head position. His head's digging right into his shoulder. Second he gets good head position in his own tie, that's when he's gonna take his chance to attack. You As you can see, it paid off. You saw right there, very aggressive and get those four near fall points. DeSanto, again, heavy on the back. He's putting a lot of pressure on those hands. It takes a toll trying to work your way up with these guys. Last time, Lance doing well, working up. Last time Alfred DeSanto defeated Paul Conrath of Indiana, a former Wisconsin Badger who transferred this past year. Be beat him by an 18 to three tech fall in the first period. Certainly something you want to see as you head towards March in the Big Ten Championships in Minneapolis. Again, you see that left-sided fireman's again. Strong control, great head position, great clamp on that left arm. And then when he sees the opening, he's gonna take that quick sweep right in there, try to work for a near fall. But seems he got a takedown off of it. Now heading into the second period, Lance will begin on top. Yet another caution between the two wrestlers. Caution. Minute and a half nearly of riding time for Austin DeSanto. Santo finished first at the Midlands Championships back in December. Regarded as one of the more difficult open tournaments or invite tournaments in the country. Was able to take down Noah Gonzer Campbell. 
as well as ranked wrestlers like Dylan Duncan of Illinois, who was ranked 17th at the time, beat him by a disqualification. Again, DeSancho on that takedown. A strong clamp on that left arm. He's gonna go in. This time he's gonna go in for a dump. He's gonna swing to the outside, try to get that single. Head's gonna be inside though, but he's gonna dump straight down. As you can see he tried to swim up to the top, try to get some near fall, didn't happen to work. He'll settle for the two though. Now DeSanto's leading into that major decision category, being up eight, riding time point, and look like it'll be nine. So DeSanto surely looking for that tech fall. More bonus points for the Hawkeyes, should this one play out in DeSanto's favor. DeSanto drops in on the single, head inside underneath Lance's hip, he's gonna look to He's gonna look to hook that left leg right across, try to limp arm that left arm out. And they are ruled out of bounds, so they're gonna go straight back to the center. There you go again. Left side, left side swing, left side single. He's gonna hold on to that left arm of, uh, left arm of Jens Lantz, and he's gonna swing for that dump. DeSanto doing a good job of controlling the mat right now. Lance has got to circle his way to the center. Lance looking for his first NCAA qualification. As you see the stalling, another point awarded. DeSanto as both wrestlers will now reset, heading to the center. Just three seconds left here in the second period. Santo on top, heavy, 12 to three, minute and 42 seconds of riding time. That is choice, we're going Lance down. will choose down to begin the third. Now you see Chris Bono in his first season as Wisconsin Badgers head coach, eight and five on the season. Had that rough stretch where the Badgers lost five straight. Were able to cap it off with that criteria win against Illinois just a week ago. Match the Badgers were down 16 to nine as Asanto gets that takedown. The Badgers were able to win those final two matches with a Bo Bresky sudden victory win over Andre Lee and then Trent Hilger was able to get enough individual points where Wisconsin was able to take the duel by criteria. Nice single there by DeSanto. He's gonna get another two off of it. DeSanto's been doing a very good job of putting a lot of pressure towards his opponent, waiting for that pressure to come right back to him. Once he feels it, he's dropping right underneath. Just discussing how difficult the 133 pound weight class is now with former NCAA champion Seth Gross, who has a lot of familiarity with Chris Bono and Coach Reeder. Now that he's out of the 133 pound weight class, whose weight class do you think is it for it to gain come March? It's so deep. Who do you think can it is? Capitalize? See, wrestling is such such a unique sport. And that weight class is so deep that it's really any man's game. Whoever decides to show up in March, perform, you know, does all the small things right, like diet, great exercise, good sleep, more likely to have a better performance come March. And you got names in the ever difficult Big Ten, like Nick Suriano, Ethan Lezak. Right here, DeSanto swimming out the back off of Lance. Lance has that leg, gonna try to create a scramble off of it. They're gonna give DeSanto the two, because he has control over that left ankle or that left leg of uh, Lance. Once he hooks that leg, that's, that signifies that that's control over your opponent, and that is given a two, so there you go. Again, going back, just 133 pounds could be regarded as one of the more difficult weight classes and deep weight classes in the country especially within the Big Ten Conference, with other names like Stefan Micic, as well as Ethan Lezak, as aforementioned, DeSanto, Suriano, amongst many names. So once we hit Minneapolis for the Big Ten Championships, we could potentially be seeing other matches that we'll see in the finals. And that will be it for the 133 pound matchup. Austin DeSanto will take a 21 to eight victory over Jens Lance.